So, Nibbles, take it all back to answer more goddamn questions. Got them all printed off here. Should be more than enough for today's video. First one, favorite dog questions. Keep sending them, goddammit. I want to average two a day, goddammit. Seven days a week. Paid question. And it's from fucking uh, William. Puts, hey, J-Dog, only read my first name if you can. <coughs> so here you go. It's just from William. Last name is anonymous. <clears throat> I don't like having my full name on the internet. It's on the internet whether you like it or not, brah, brah. It would in some way, shape, or form. But no problem. It was cool meeting you at Metal Immortal. Uh, so the show in Pittsburgh. I was a dude asking about the Lord Gore represses. Okay, yeah, I think I remember you. I think I remember which one you were. And talking about other bands Maniac Neil is in just actually imported Splatterhouse's self-titled on vinyl. You just imported it like you ordered it. But, uh, yeah, I have that LP. The uh, Well, self-titled, it, it's the, the one I have is the house that Dead, Dead built. And then I have the split with uh, Gruesome Stuff Relish. Those are the ones I own on vinyl. And then I own the uh, split 7-inch with uh, Bird Flesh. Fantastic fucking grind split. I must motherfucking say. So if you want a killer-ass fucking grind split, Bird Flesh with Splatterhouse. Pick that one up, Rob Ross. Can't go wrong with it. The Bird Flesh cover is ridiculous as fuck, but that's kind of their whole shtick. It was supposed to be completely fucking stupid. Um, but what I understand what Bird Flesh, their whole shtick, or at least part of the reason was, it was kind of like a... You know, a jab or a fucking nudge at black metal. You know, the cabal black metal tough guys trying to act fucking tough. Specifically, specifically with songs like The Gay and The Demon. Um, so I think that's kind of part of their shtick of why it's so goddamn silly. Kind of almost, almost kind of like fuck with those dudes. I got two questions. Number one, can we get a top 10 Asian bands? I don't know if I have top 10, but... uh since it's a paid goddamn question, I jotted some down. Then when I just think of Asia, um, here's who I kind of came up with all the time in my fucking head. Is, uh, and he, he says that. I can't think of any other than Pharmacist, Side, Wormrot, and Abigail, which are cool even if Side is weird as fuck. So, yeah, if you can't think of any others, here's the dogs list, goddammit. Pharmacist, Crowley, old school heavy metal band that just did uh, one album and a couple demos. Uh, Satanic Heavy Metal from the 80s. Fantastic fucking shit. Uh, Metal Lucifer. Uh, if you don't know them, brah, brah, I highly recommend checking them out. Sabat, especially, I mean, I don't like everything by Sabat, but uh, Sabat Evoke, which is their second album, and Venom is their first album, which is fantastic as well. But Evoke is their second full length. That is probably my favorite album to come out of Japan. To be honest, talking about Asian shit, that probably might be my favorite Asian record ever. Along with Next and Lion and Piety from Singapore, uh, the first two in Pieties, those are up there. But if I had a pick, who do I like more, the fir first two in Pieties or Sabat Evoke? Probably Sabat Evoke, to be honest with you. Uh, Abhor, check out that goddamn banger too. Their uh, Rompus of the Dead, 7-inch, the best thing they've ever did. Hells had the privilege to put it on a 12-inch LP, 12-inch for this years ago. And then they're, they're full length. Um, because they only done one full length. We got to put that on a vinyl too. L LP and picture this has been several fucking years. Dog has them both, of course. Um they were a Singaporean fucking, you know, sarcophago type worship fucking man in the early nineties. Uh Vomit Remnants from Japan. I definitely liked to my knowledge, they only have that one record. I don't know if they did later shit. I or I kind of fell off. Um Vomit Remnants too that they're a band which I, I kind of like, I didn't think anything of it at the time. Like, kind of, why did I not like bust their balls or a bad taste in my mouth when seeing their fucking image? Because they literally sports jerseys and fucking flat brims for days, brah, brah. And I saw it in person, goddammit. Um, I met them and uh, because they, they played the Ohio Death Fest in 2000, 2001. And uh, I met all the guys. I got my picture, a group photo with them. And, um, didn't get to talk to them much because they they just spoke very, very little English. But yeah, dude, they were literally, they looked like they were going straight to the goddamn Cavs game. That's what you thought they'd be going, not playing a metal show. I guess the reason I thought nothing of it is they were just these, like, little friendly Japanese guys that didn't speak much English. And it's kind of like a, since there's such a culture difference, I just saw them as kind of like tourists coming to America 
and uh, I, I looked at it differently. Not that, that, that that's an excuse, but uh, and I thought that album was just catchy as fucking shit. Uh, that was before all this dumbass fucking slam death metal devourment worship. It's definitely got some devourment influence in there, no doubt about it. But just a little bit more groovy and catchy. Um, that was before like people going back, and again, this is kind of my era. You know, when uh, King Folly and Don were talking about people listening to shit now from the 80s when they were there when it was coming out. And they're comparing it to stuff that's coming out in 2022, 2023. They're going, they're just putting it all at one. They're just checking it all out on YouTube at the same goddamn time. It's it's totally different. So I could say, yeah, like when that Vomit Remnants came out, all this fucking, these dumbass bands that exist now of that style, it didn't even exist. So it was kind of new and it was... To this day, I still enjoy that album. It's a good, catchy fucking uh, record, you know. Um, but I can see how somebody, they're getting this now. They're 19 years old, and they're getting into, like, the more, I'm getting into Blasphemy and fucking uh, and Vaughn and, and uh, all, the whole South American scene, sar Sarcophago, Volcano, and shit like that. And they look at something like Vaughn and Reds, oh, dude, that's total fucking trash. And comparing it to that whole genre that exists now to Epper Cardectimony and bullshit ass fucking crap not knowing around. I'm sure bands like Epper Cardectimony fucking stupidity was influenced by albums like Vomit Remnants. Um they suck. Vomit Remnants was good, goddammit. That's just that's all you need to goddamn fucking know. Our Japanese band, Butcher ABC. Uh total like gore grind similar to like uh general surgery and shit. Another band I put in there is, uh, I always like the 7-inch, and I, I know they got like a couple demos, which I haven't heard, but uh, Nuke War Now put the 7-inch out years ago. There's a band called Mutation from Singapore. Singapore, they did that uh, Void of Disharmony 7-inch. That's all I have. Thought that was fucking great. Just good fucking 90s uh, style death metal that came from Singapore. You would have never guessed it was from Singapore. It sounds like it came from the Netherlands or some shit. You know what I mean? Like something maybe similar like Sinister or... Uh, ceremony bands like that um thought that was a good seven inch and i definitely would like to hear those demos so this will be, unless they sound like complete utter ass which is a possibility um but if they're good recording demos and the shit that they're just as good as the seven inch um the nwn or somebody else should put that crap out assuming assuming nobody has I've, I've never seen them anyways that's the only thing about mutation i know is that seven inch and i'll throw in there for good taste from uh from japan as well well japan slash kind of america is that goddamn Tiger Junkies release. As a whole, I put that in there because that's all, you know, they just did uh, one 7-inch and, uh, was it two 7-inches? Might have even done two 7-inches. But then, then the full length that Hell's put out, uh, that was Joel Grind playing with the uh, Yasuki. Um, is that his name? Yasuki? Uh, yeah, the Abigail guy, Barbados guy. He did that project and he did the uh, Barbados uh, Chaos Fury whatever the hell fucking full title is, Fury, Fear, Chaos. Yeah, I think it has Fury, Fear, Chaos. Um, that's probably my favorites, but as a whole, since uh, Barbados has a bunch of other releases that I don't like nearly as much, and Tiger Junkie just kind of have was a very short-lived band. I put Tiger Junkies in there, and, well, it sounds like you might not not, not know. Uh, it's, I, it's a little education there. I figure everybody know, I, To me, I, honestly, if you're in a metal, I kind of automatically assume you minimally know who Barbados is. Now, whether you like them or not, again, irrelevant. You don't have to like them. You don't have to... You don't have to hate them. You can just be in the middle, don't care. But again, I assume if you're in a metal or underground metal, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, the Japanese metal band. You at least know that. If you, if you don't, got some educating to do, and it sounds like you might need to because you said those are the only Asian bands you can think of. But granted, I draw blanks off the top of my head too, so maybe they're in there. But uh, if you don't know them, then you damn sure don't know Tiger Junkies. And get, like I said, a little goddamn education for the channel too. Hell, check Hell's site. We might even have some Tiger Junkies CDs left. I don't know if we do. I want to say we don't, but I don't do a search, goddamn it, in case you're fucking interested. I definitely think that's a good ass disc. This second goddamn question. I can't remember if you mentioned them, but does Behemoth suck shit? Or is it just me? Early albums are fantastic, Rob Rod. That is just fucking you. I never understood the hype for them. Burzum and a I don't understand the, the hype for them, Burzum and Amana Marth. So Burzum. I mean, I understand the hype to an extent on all of them. Uh, Burzum, I was never a fan of. I just think it's boring as shit. But, I mean, credit is given what credit is due. I mean, they were a legendary band when they started. And, you know, Varg's vocals were totally fucking sick sounding. That sounded like nobody. Um, but most of it, the reason their fan base is what it is. It's, it's called, like, the fuck it is. Again, the, the diehards aren't going to watch. No, I love the tunes. I brush my teeth to it. 
No, you don't. I mean, maybe a couple of you do, but for the most part, no, you don't. You like it because it's image, it's fucking gimmick, it's goddamn burn the churches down, it's it, it's taboo, there's a controversy behind it, it gets pink bannies up in a bunch, the whole fucking nine yards. If it was just some random fucking dude that never went to prison, never killed anybody, never uh, burned down a fucking church, just some juggalo in a goddamn sports jersey, there'd be some people that still like that goddamn music, but for the most part, people would be having a fucking field band. What the fucking shit? You don't like it because this music was just that good. There's a million other fucking bands that are a th million times fucking better. But he was at the, uh, you know, he did something in the very beginning, and then the, by the third or fourth release, was completely fucking garbage, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Amon Amarth, I, I always put them in the fucking paddle in a goddamn canoe with fucking bands like Lamb of God. I don't know why, for whatever reason, I think just by the name alone, I just automatically associated both those bands together as one. Uh, but I gotta say, I, I like I said in recent times, I, I've listened to some of those early Amon Amars, uh, the Crusher, and One Cent from Golden Halls, I think it's called. Uh, it's pretty goddamn good. It's definitely respect. It's true metal. It's uh, you know, very professionally produced and shit. But again, if you're gonna rip on that, then do you listen to any Iron Maiden? Do you listen to fucking uh, uh, Rain and Blood? That's all professionally produced and commercially produced, or whatever the hell you want to say. So you don't like it. So I, I kind of don't like that argument, too, because it, it wasn't like they were starting off as some, let's be some primitive goddamn, let's next goddamn Fallen Angel of Doom album. If they were to set out to do that and they give you that, you're like, what the fuck are these bozos doing? That would make sense. But I think some of these 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 Ultra Cabal UG guys fucking only demo demos are real, which is becoming really fucking weird to me, too, as I've done this goddamn channel. Is ever since I started calling it out in demos and shit, people are looking at me like I'm some elitist or some idiot. I, I thought it was just more of a common thing, like, I start bringing shit up and people are like, yeah, this guy, what is he fucking talking about? I was from a whole other planet. I was like, dude, I've been hearing this crap for the last 20 goddamn years before I started the dumbass channel. You guys are looking at me like I'm the fucking weirdo. So anyways, uh, yeah, I think those are Mono Mars. It's a little bit minimally ex respectable metal. Now, is it commercialized and more commercially friendly? Is it, yes. Is their fan base probably annoying as hell? I don't really know, but I would assume so. Uh, I can't, I've never been to an Mono Mars show and I, it's not like I know a ton of people that listen to anything, but I would imagine so, being a popular band. But again, using that thing, it's like, so is Cannibal Corpse's fan base, so is Deicide's fan base, so is Suffocation's fan base, throw some black, so is Behemoth's fan base, let's throw, throw some black metal, so is Mayhem's fan base. I don't know if that's crush, bro. Mayhem's fucking fan base sucks shit, bro, bro. What I'm getting at is any, any band that is popular at this point has annoying fucking fans. So you can't really go by that. Just put it on, grab the crush or whatever, and just put it on and tell me this is not metal. It's like you guys are like almost like insulting it and comparing it to some fucking Twink Chapel or something or Chelsea's Grin or something. Granted, haven't officially heard those dumbass bands. Put it to you this way. Haven't heard those bands, and I can guarantee you those early Amon Amars, at least the others, I never heard the later ones. Is it possible they canoed it up like a motherfucker? It's possible. I never heard them, so I can't vouch for those. I just heard a couple of the early ones. I think just those two I mentioned. I thought I'd maybe listen to something else. I don't know if I've seen the cover, but The Crusher and Golden Halls. I, I listen to those two for sure. I guarantee those those destroy fucking Twink Chapel, Chelsea's Grin, Motionless and White. Wasn't that one of the dumbass fucking names? Isn't a Wrestle the Bear? I mean, come on, dude. You guys are, some of you guys are almost throwing them in the, at least the way you're talking, you're throwing them in that category. It's like, for fuck's sakes, man. It's a way better than that. And I haven't even heard that shit. And there's no doubt in my mind it's better than that shit. Uh, Behemoth, my rule of thumb is the Lemma Point Six down. It was all fucking great. So what is that? Uh, one, two, three. What, the sixth album? Fifth album or sixth album? First five or six albums. The Zoys Kia Cultist, whatever. That was the last one I picked up. Listen to it. I'm like, eh, why does it sound like War of Angel Gateways to Annihilation? which is, quite frankly, a very mediocre record as is. Why would you want to rip that off? And, and you guys start off as a black metal band? Like, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Like, what the fuck's going on? Um, never listened to anything after that. Saw them live with Cannibal Corpse. They opened up on uh, the Skeletal Domain Tour, so I think that was 2014, something around there. Um, thought they looked cool. Didn't recognize any of the songs. People said, oh, dude, albums like The Satanists and shit are fucking great. I'm sure you're not mistaking that for Satanica, because that is definitely fucking great. 
Um, I just assumed, yeah, it's, it's artsy fartsy fucking. I don't give a shit about black metal after Zoys Chaos because the Zoys, I didn't even really like that. Well, Lemma Point Six down, liked all that shit. That's my goddamn stance on it. So take it or leave it. You can check the early ones out. Uh, Michael Scondato, Van Halen mess question mark, calling obituary a racist band question mark. You are having a bad week, Rob. Rob, dude, this is why I found this goddamn question. And Michael Scondato, that name looks extremely familiar. I, I'm pretty sure, like, I, I recognize it from orders and shit. So I'm gonna go a bit easy on you. So we'll exclude your name. Let me just talk in general, especially on that obituary comment. So you guys, some of you fucking guys, dude, reading these comments. I literally have no idea how you get by in fucking life. I mean, I just want to go up and fucking just bang my head in the fucking nearest hard, hard object. Microwave wall, slam my head in the car door or whatever when I see some of you dumb dumbs talking about. At no fucking point did I call obituary racist. I didn't. I told a story by a person that said that to me, not my words, their words. And I saw, I saw a few people in the comments too saying, oh, so-and-so calling Rick will put you a racist to our names. I never said a name. What name did you, what, what, what who do you know I'm talking about, Brabra? I never used the fucking name. So uh, I never said any, any name. So I don't know where the fuck you heard that. <coughs> the story somebody told me that known them for years said they said that. If they did, they did. If they didn't, they didn't. Just like there's a few people that they got, they got a few People uh, messaging me and shit like that. I don't know, Jado. I might want to take that down. Like, they might contact you or do a response video. Do a response video. I don't give a fuck if they do or don't. Again, I have nothing against it. And I said, I fully support obituary. I listen to obituary. First two albums are masterpiece. And complete and complete's a good album. Gets a little goddamn boring. Will Demise. Eh, thought it was kind of weak. I just don't care. I didn't care about that album. Uh, uh, Back from the Dead. I actually think that album's fucking great. Songs like Threatening Skies and stuff. The bullet, the bullituary thing was dumb as fuck. Um, Executioner's Return or whatever that album. I have it. Haven't spent a little while since I listened to it, but I remember always liking it. Uh, eh, kind of since then was stopped paying attention. Heard one or two others, didn't really like them. Picked up the last album, thought it was fucking good. Said I fully support them, and it wasn't calling them out anyways. It was calling out fucking Decibel. It wasn't even calling them out. It was just saying, hey, if you're gonna call us this shit, Hell's Headbangers, with no evidence, by the way. And no support on that whatsoever. ever. But yet, here's a story. Supposedly, they are. Again, dog don't care. Dog believes in freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of fucking thought. He's not anti-American like your ass if you think otherwise. If that's their opinion, and they don't like fucking certain folks, that's on them. I don't give a fuck. that they're, they're, they're entitled to it. Don't know the guys. They're strangers to me. I just listen to the tunes, keys, brah, brah. So I at no point ever called him that. Stop putting goddamn words in my mouth and fucking get your goddamn fucking head on straight. You, you, you look fucking stupid. I told a goddamn story. That's it. And then, and, then, and then, like I said, if obituary sees it, then they, can, then they can watch this too. Do his response. I don't care. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I, I'm not saying I was right. I'm just, here's a story I was fucking told. And I'm just telling it on camera because I do a video every day and I need shit to talk about. And I knew people would find that one interesting. And they sure fucking did. Ate it up like a box of goddamn Frosted Flakes for breakfast. Scarf that one down. And Van Halen could suck a dick. He fucking, because he sucks dick. That one was having a great week, Rob, right? Those got some views. Woo! Sean Fastnacht. Question for the dog. Does Don like DSI now, or does he still think they're ass? Ha ha. And which, who knows with that guy. Um, I'm assuming he doesn't. He, he didn't, I'm sure he hasn't picked them up. Let's put it that way. And which Carnivore album do you like better, the self-titled or Retaliation? Question mark. They're both great, but to be honest to me, with you, I, I find that even a strange question. There's no even competition. Uh, the 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 fucking debut album smokes Retaliation. Retaliation become you can start to hear like more of the um, the New York scene that other bands sounded like it in there as well, as opposed to the first album, it had its own fucking identity. And another goddamn thing is, too, in my humble-ass opinion, on Retaliation, the standout song is Angry, Necro Angry Neurotic Catholics. That's the, the, the standout song. The cell title doesn't have a standout song because it's too fucking hard to pick because they're all fucking bangers head to fucking toe almost equally. 
Again, don't get me wrong. I own Retaliation. I listen to Retaliation. Love Retaliation. Great fucking album. But if you had to compare, because I know somebody's going, this guy's fucking an idiot. says Retaliation sucks. All right, Bubbles, come on. Bring it in here. Come on, Forrest. Put it in there. I know you're going to say that. Guy's talking shit about retaliation. He likes that crappy cannibal corpse. All right, I can already hear the dumb fucking comments. Oh, retaliation sitting right next to those obituary albums. Proudly on the dog's fucking rack. And I recommend you get a fucking two. I'm just, I'm just saying, if I had to pick, first album, second album, first album is just, just an easy win. That's all I'm goddamn saying. For example, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm comparing fucking apples, goddamn, uh, the Tish, Hacked Up for Barbecue, versus uh, Reanimated Dead Flesh, like them both, own them both, spin them both, worship them both. But to me, it would be no contest. I wouldn't have to sit there and think about it. Hacked Up wins all day, every day, twice on fucking Sunday. That doesn't mean Reanimated sucks. Somebody's got to be first. Somebody's got to be last. Doesn't mean it sucks. So before you come in here, Bubbles, before you come in here, goddamn Forrest, Get those goddamn thick-ass fucking uh, Coke bottle bubble glasses fixed and a goddamn hearing aid before you type something stupid as fuck saying I said something that I goddamn did it. And I know someone's going to. Maybe they won't now that I fucking made it crystal goddamn clear because clearly I fucking need to based on the bozo above talking about the goddamn adventure account, which, whew, don't know how that was goddamn uh, taken out of context, but everything always does over here, so... Put whatever else in the goddamn comments on this one that you're taking out of goddamn contest, because y'all always the fuck do. Later, goddammit.